So what we're gonna be doing is uh, gonna walk through a seven step process and it'll sound crazy, but in a matter of a couple hours, I'm confident that we'll have you guys going from having never held a fly rod maybe, or not in a long time or not a lot. And we're gonna have you being able to do basic casting, I think pretty effectively. Uh, the group we worked with the first time, I think they were a bit surprised, but probably about the two, two and a half hour mark they were casting. So it's gonna sound funny. The first step, is just about setup. And so if you were to think of kind of as me as your target, uh, the first thing I want you to do is a lot of fly fishermen. So if Veeble's my target, a lot of experienced fly fishermen are gonna be right square at Veeble, right? What I'm gonna have you guys do if Veeble's my target, I want you guys to kind of stand at, kind of at a quarter. So, so your casting arm is a bit back, kind of square yourself off at about a 45. And the reason I want you to do this is, oh, I got you. <laughs> uh, the reason for this is twofold. One, as we're learning to cast, if I'm like this, I can see what's going on in front of me, but let's face it, I've got all of this, I can't see it. If we get you quartered like this, you're gonna find it's quite easy to follow your line frontwards and backwards, and we're gonna need to do that. We're gonna need to have you knowing what's going on back here. The other thing is, if you ever got serious about fly fishing, you're going to find that the folks that do it this way, where you're squaring off to your target, they're going to be much more comfortable, for instance, fishing something that's here versus here. If you actually get used to doing this and being quartered off, I can cast there as easy as I can cast there, right? If I'm like this, I really can't do that. So it's actually, it'll, it'll, practically, if you ever get into fishing, it's going to let you work both sides of a river, a pond, or whatnot. So the second thing is, the uh, the grip and the grip is simply think handshake thumb up thumb on the rod think handshake okay so um tell you what danny why don't you jump in between these two guys and if you can move just a tad that way don't want to have you too long without a rod in your hand or you're going to miss on this so think of me as your target, kind of quarter your body a little bit. Um, go ahead and put your thumb right on top. Yeah, that's better, right on top. There you go, yep. So for a moment, if I'm your target, kind of face me. Um, right now, you're, you're about like this. There you go, that's exactly it. That's why I said really think handshake. Your thumb, your thumb should be in line with the rod, perfect. And it should, it, the rod should almost go like your thumb, thumb to your arm, good. And Vibo, go ahead and kind of po point your hand at me a minute. Okay, good. So believe it or not guys, um, step one is done. For step two, what we're going to have you do is what we'll call pick up and deliver. Um, I'm going to help. I'm going to help put some line out, so you got a little line to work with. And this is going to. We're going to spend a lot of time on this one. It's going to seem pretty pretty straightforward. By pick up and deliver, it's just going to be a matter of the line will be kind of like with Greg. He's got a bit of line out in front of him. It's going to be being able to bring the line up, put the line down. We're not worried about where it goes really i mean that it's generally in front of you that's success it's just going to be pick up and set down and the first thing we really want you guys to get in the habit of is when you get about midnight ish you got to stop and by stop i do mean discreetly stop bring it back down you're going to find that the two most important words that you're going to learn in the next couple of weeks are stop and stop, and I'm not exaggerating. Almost anything that's going wrong, am I stopping in my back cast? Am I stopping in my forecast? Usually you're probably not. So um, what we're gonna do, let me show, show real quick here. I'll kind of cast sideways so you guys can see me. But all we're gonna do is, uh, like I said, just a pick up, we call this pick up and deliver. So we'll get a little bit of line out. And I, I'll, I'll grab your lines and make sure you got line out in front of you. But we'll, we'll start with our rod, say, about a foot off the ground. And there's a reason for that. 
Um, I'll come back to that in a minute as to why. Um, but it's really going to be just a stop, deliver. Stop, deliver. That's all we want to get you guys comfortable with doing. Um, I had mentioned a minute ago that it, you really want to end right about here. You want to start right about here. I need tension on the line for this to work because basically you're gonna, this rod's gonna act a bit like a spring. The more resistance I have here, the more I've got a spring here. If I've got this much line in the air, I've got about eight feet of line that's getting some resistance from the grass, it's gonna tug a little bit. Whereas if I'm like this, I got 15, 20 feet of line, it's a lot more resistance, it's gonna be more effective. So it'll take time, but get in the habit of starting your cast where you're just maybe a foot off the water, a foot off the lawn. So quarter stance, thumb on top of the rod, stop, deliver. Don't want to see any of this right now, just pick it up, put it down. And of all the things I really want you thinking about right now is um, you probably got enough line out, you're good. Uh, you'll probably want a little bit more line out there, TJ. So go ahead and just start getting comfortable with it. And I'm just going to kind of watch for a bit. Okay, so it's not going to surprise me or hopefully any of you guys. The one thing we're not seeing really good are the stops. But here's the funny thing is, you'll say, of course I'm stopping. Um, two things to be aware of. One is, and this, will, this is another thing that's going to take some time for all of you, but when we say stop, I can stop my arm, but if I don't stop my wrist, watch what happens with the fly line. I'm going to try and do it both ways. If I'm doing a stop, and watch where my line is, how my line lays out real nice behind me. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stop my arm, but I'm going to do this with my wrist. I'm going to stop my arm just like I did before, but by, by not stopping my wrist. Look at my line. So kind of get that wrist in kind of a locked position. And like I said, just bring her about to midnight. Midnight plus or minus, if it's 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, no matter. That's what I was thinking about, if I'm supposed to have my wrist locked. Yeah. Or not. And much better, TJ. So take your time, Vibo. Let it. Let it lay out behind. Let it lay out behind you and stop. You guys, you may even want to get in the ha habit of almost going, you know, even verbally saying "stop." And once the word's done, come forward. Danny, that was a lot better. That was very good. That one you hurried. That one you hurried. That one you didn't. That was a lot better there, Danny. So um, some general things here. Um, you guys are doing a good job, what I would say, of keeping your elbow below your shoulder. There's no harm. I'm going to, again, for demonstration purposes, I want to show you what I'm talking about. There's no harm doing this. I mean, that I, like, so if we're doing this exercise here, there's not really any harm in me doing it up here, right? But I can do it from here, right? And Vibo nailed it on that right on the head. If I'm doing this, I'm gonna get real tired real quick. So just kind of be thinking about, in general, you're gonna want your elbow below your arm. This is not about right or wrong, guys. This is just a tip not to wear yourselves out. Uh, 
Um, so Danny raised a very good question and you're gonna kind of like the answer and kind of not. When your mechanics are getting good, that line is gonna lay out in front of you straight as an arrow. If we're doing something wrong, we're gonna get some curly cues and the line's basically gonna pile up in front of you. So for better or worse, when that line lays out pretty straight, that was a decent cast. That one wasn't. And I didn't even need to, I didn't need to look at this. I didn't, you know, I can tell by looking at that I did something wrong. But I would say right now what you guys are experiencing is what little, the only thing you guys have got going on that you got to work on right now is, is, is getting the rod to stop. So think about it too. I've mentioned stop your arm, make sure your wrist isn't moving. This is where I want to take advantage of the fact that we got you guys standing like this, not like this. For a couple minutes, what I want you to do, I don't want you looking in front of you. I want you doing one thing. I want you to catch the tree behind you. What I want you guys to do is simply be looking up and I want you to watch your rod stop and then in your peripheral vision, you're gonna see the line lay out behind the rod. Watch your rod stop, watch the line lay out. When the line's just about straight, start your forward motion. Stop go right stop it lays out because the other thing about not stopping is if I do it too quickly again I, I never let the line lay out so it's stop get the line to lay out come forward so on this one guys I don't want anybody looking forward I want each of you just don't even worry about what's in front of you. I mean that. Don't even look. Okay. That was a good one, Greg. Good stops, good delays. And by the way, the one thing I would tell you is um, if, you, if we need you to come forward a bit, TJ. Ah, just yank on it. Worst cases, we'll put a new tassel on for you. Did we break off? Yeah, we did. I'll go grab you another one in a second. Um, the one thing I was going to say is back to Danny's question earlier. You'll know if you, the beauty of, of not even looking in front of you, if you're watching all this, and when you're done, literally, it's all done, you look. If the line's nice and straight, you know you did it right. So the proof will be in the pudding there. Um, you guys are doing really good on this drill. Uh, it's a good problem to have. What you're actually doing is probably waiting a little too long. And Rennie's running off and getting you tagged, so I'm going to steal your rod for just a second. And by the way, this is where I'd rather have you guys. On this exercise, you've done a really good job. I'm watching it. The rods are stopping. I'm watching it. You're letting the line get way behind you. What we got to work on now, like I said, this is only step two. This will be the longest step of the whole process, trust me. We get this down. Oh, thanks, Rennie. We get this down, we'll be in good shape. What I'm going to show you is, you guys are, like I said, you're doing a great job of stopping. You're watching, you're waiting for the line to go out. We're actually waiting a tad too long because what's happening is the line is actually falling and kind of dying. And so again, we're losing power. There's a sweet spot where just a fraction, if you think of the line laying out, right about here. I want to start bringing it forward. You guys, and again, I'd rather, I'd rather have you guys being late on the forward than early because if you're early, that means we're not stopping, we're not letting line lay out. You're going to work your arm off and you're not going to have good casts. And V-Bowl, again, nice straight line. I didn't even see what you did, but I know you did a lot of good things because of what I'm seeing there. Greg's last cast, I don't know what you did. I just know it was very much right. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. So, again, what we're working on for a couple minutes, again, don't even, don't even be looking in front of you. Stop. Lay out. 
It lays out, I come forward. What we're doing right now, guys, is a lot of you are doing the, see how my rod, my, my line is almost on the ground now. And that makes me lose a lot of power. So just like I said, I, I literally mean this. Don't, I don't even want you looking beyond your shoulder. Just stop my rod. As soon as I see the line kind of lay out behind it, I'm coming forward. Fair? If we have you angle a little bit, you got a kind of a corridor between there, and we can also shorten the line up a little bit if you need to. Proof's in the pudding, Danny. So, Greg, are you looking up or forward? Yeah, just let's just focus on the rod tip. I want you guys to watch your rod tip stop. I want you to watch your line layout behind it. Great, Greg. Greg, that, that was very, very good. You had a good stop. You had good timing on the forward. Not bad. And so, Danny, I think your timing and everything isn't bad. What I'm seeing is a lot of wrist. So kind of have your eyes, let your eyes force you to make the, make the rod stop. Not, not even, think about it, not even your arm stopping your wrist. Just say, I'm going to watch it. I'm gonna, that rod is going to stop right there. Yeah. Yeah, and look how nice it laid out, right? It's all right. I think he's still wristing. He is. Running behind you a second. Do you mind if I put hands on you? Okay. What I'd like you to do is, is relax. I'm going to kind of do the motion for you. Keep your hand on there. Um, but I just want you to kind of feel what this might be like. What, what you are doing, you don't realize it, is you really are coming back and you're doing this. In fact, notice where your elbow is. Your elbow's kind of up and out. Yeah. Um, we should be able to keep the elbow down here a little bit. Again, this is just you getting tired or not. This is not uh -huh. good technique, bad technique. But what we ought to be able to do, again, is you're doing a little bit of that and a lot of wrist flex. Wow, that was nice. If we, sometimes we get lucky, eh? But what we really want to see is, and I'm just going to watch your rod tip. Look at that. Wow. So I'm going to watch my rod stop at midnight. Line's just about laid out. Now I come forward. Stop. My line's laid out. I come forward. It's just like this. It's it is. It's, it's very much elbow. And by the way, what I may do, I may bring some rubber bands next week because what actually works well for people, I had to do this, for yeah. people that have a hard time keeping their wrist straight, put a rubber band on you. And in and fact, then there's, it's, yeah, it's a this is going to feel funny, but try and cast. Yeah. Better. See, look at, look at, look at, because you're not flexing your wrist, you're getting the stop. Look at that, two, two in a row, perfectly straight. Yeah. And so, that's a good way of showing you, and you know, and there's tricks. If you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, you can tuck it in your shirt. You could tuck it under your watch, but I may put a rubber band, you know, next week to just just to, because you saw that with me holding it, you were stopping tight, and your line was laying out wonderfully, and you you saw it lay out in front of you three or four times. A tad slow, TJ, but like I said, I'd rather have you a tad slow than early. You got a very pronounced stop. That was good. Yep. That was even better. I think I might be going back too far. Yeah, see that on that one, it was it's just a matter of uh, of being a little quicker on your forward. But that was just about see that one I'm looking on the back, that one was perfect, and look what your cast looked like. Because you literally the line had just straightened out and you came forward. Slower down, Danny. Slower down. 
that. Oh, you're doing that? Okay. I say, just, yeah, slow her down. There, there. Yeah, see? That doesn't surprise me because I was watching that. That yeah, told me you were going to be fine. I'm just thinking of this. Just yeah. Don't move this. That was good, Greg. We probably have a, a little extra line out for you, Greg. Um, you're doing okay with it, but that's a lot of line to be throwing right now. Nice straight one, good. Yeah, bring a little bit in. There's kind of a fine line where if you, if you don't have enough line out, it's actually yeah. tricky, but if you have too much, you got a lot of line to, to kind of maneuver. So yeah. go ahead and try that. It might, might feel a little better. I've been coming back about two o'clock, it seems like. Well, I'm... Okay, and that's why I said, be, be sure that you're kind of squared off. And, yeah. and seriously, don't even look forward. Just, just do a couple of these where you don't even look. And I'm, I'm gonna guarantee you, if you're, if you're looking up and behind you, and you like what you see there, if that really looks good to you, you're gonna look in front of you when you're done, the cast is gonna be laid out just perfectly. Slower, yep, slower down. Just slower down. There you go. So let me stop us for a minute, take a break guys. That's the other thing I'll try not to do is, um, is uh, have you guys doing this for 20 minutes at a crack, you're, gonna, you're just gonna wear out. It, it, it just goes with, and by the way, when you're fishing, you're not doing this all the time, right? The, the, the line's in the water, you're trying to catch a fish. You may go seconds to minutes without having to pick it up and move it. Um, everything I'm seeing so far looks good. Um, the only thing I'm seeing is, you know, getting a crisp stop and getting the timing on the line laying out. I see you guys coming forward a little late, and I am serious, what that means to me is you're doing a good job stopping. I'd rather have you there than have you where, you know, I'm almost stopped and then I'm going forward. Because if you do this, you know, with 20 feet of line out, you'll probably get away with it, but you'll get tired. Uh, try putting 30, 35 feet of line out. There ain't enough power in your arm to get that line out. So what I'm seeing right now, I'm happy with where you're at. We got a couple minutes. Based on what we did today, what, what's on your mind? Questions, concerns, observations? There's a good, so uh, it's something Danny and I were just talking about. Um, there's two tricks, Greg. One is, and I do mean this, pretend the entire universe is right here because I'm gonna watch that rod come to a dead stop. I, like I said, I don't care what's happening here. I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna watch the line layout. So one thing is take advantage of this non-squared off posture so I can see what's going on. Number two is almost all you're gonna find that you thought you stopped because the arm stopped, but your wrist is doing this. And, and let me show you something else that really, it kind of, it really amplifies this. If you think about, think about the arc that my rod travels, if I stop nice and crisp with my arm right here, so my rod's right here, watch if I flex my wrist just a couple of degrees. Look at the amount of travel in my rod. I only flex, my, my wrist might have rolled an inch. That rod's 10 feet further back than it ought to be, right? My arm stopped just like I thought it would. So the one thing, Greg, is just focus on the, I want to see the rod stop, the line go out behind it. When the line's just about at the end, I'm going to bring it forward. The other thing is, and I, I was saying to Danny, I'll probably bring some, rub, some kind of heavy rubber bands next week. What you probably don't realize, to a greater or lesser extent, you are flexing the wrists. Um, and that is, and so what we do is literally put a little rubber band on your wrist and tuck this under here. Um, Danny, Danny felt it when I let him cast. All I did was hold, I held the rod to his arm his stops were just like a, right? And then he came forward and he had three casts in a row, the line just laid right out. So that's another thing we can do is we'll do something to basically force you into not having your wrist break. Cause that is normal. That's just a, that's kind of just a growing pain. So that would be my two answers there. One is be watching the thing stop because your eyes won't deceive you. And number two, if it's not stopping 90% of the time, it's cause we're flexing our wrist. Questions, observations. Good for today.